there is often a stark gap between the abilities of the gifted individual and their actual accomplishments. I'm Edwin Palmer. This is my series on intellectual giftedness and things related to it. And today, I want to talk about When I was in elementary school, I never worked hard in school. I didn't have to. It was so easy. I almost never did my homework, didn't put in a lot of effort. When I was in the fifth and sixth grade, I was bullied at school. That made me suffer from depression, so it was no wonder I didn't work hard at school. Things went fine anyway. My classmates considered me smart. When I started middle school, things got complicated. Suddenly, school forced me to work much harder, and since I had never done it before, because I never believed I had to, I just didn't. I lacked the work ethic required to learn things that didn't come immediately to me, and didn't have any good learning strategies. I've never failed a class, but I could have gotten a lot better grades. It wasn't until I was 15 that I began working hard at school. Now, I often regret not working harder during my early years of education. This made me wonder, though. 1. What is underachievement? 2. Why is it a problem? And 3. How can we battle? Underachievement. This is the answer to question one. Underachievement is the fact of doing less well than you could do, especially in schoolwork. As I said before, there is often a stark gap between the abilities of the gifted individual and their actual accomplishments. Many gifted students perform extremely well on standardized or reasoning tests, only to fail a class exam. This disparity can result from various factors, such as loss of interest in classes that are too easy, or negative social consequences of being perceived as smart. Underachievement can also result from emotional or psychological factors, including depression, anxiety, perfectionism, or self-sabotage. Why is underachievement a problem? Sheila A. Gallagher, who holds a PhD in education, gives 18 reasons. <laughs> Let's go over them quickly, shall we? Underachievement is a problem because it causes fear of failure, fear of success, fear of lack of acceptance by peer group, undetected learning disabilities, lack of basic skills and study habits, inappropriate educational activities, lack of opportunity in the society, too high or too low expectations of parents, a lack of parental support for education, fear of overshadowing parent, passive aggression toward parent, low frustration tolerance, a lack of impulse control, low risk-taking abilities, lack of competitiveness, guilt for being advanced intellectually, Interests in activities other than school. Cumulative deficits and belief in failure. As you can see, we shouldn't take underachievement lightly. What are things we can do to tackle this problem? Well, there is not that much kids can do to help themselves become achievers. Teachers, however, can do a lot to help underachieving kids. So here I give you five things we teachers can do to help underachievers. Number one, see the importance of self-concept. 
Disterhaft and Gergen offer strong evidence that there is a relationship between self-concept and academic performance. It's a two-way relationship. Children's self-concept has an impact on their academic achievement, and their academic achievement affects their self-concept. Children with a negative self-image lower their expectations for themselves to reduce their disappointment. Naturally, in the end, this results in less achievement. Underachievers are caught in a vicious circle that makes them feel unworthy of success and saddles them with an attitude which limits their chances of overcoming this dilemma. If the teacher helps these children to succeed and gives these students a positive self-image, the negative dynamics are forever altered. Number two, provide enrichment projects. Some gifted children may not be aware that they are gifted and not just average. One apparently effective way to try to reverse underachievement in gifted children includes educating teachers to provide enrichment projects based on students' strengths and interests without attracting negative attention from peers. Number three. Communicate high expectations. Great teachers have a mantra. All of their students can learn and be successful. Does anyone doubt the link between the teacher's expectations and the student's achievements? Joseph Chiaccio, a teacher, tried an experiment for 10 years. He had two low-level classes every year and he told his students that he moved from one-third to one-half of them to average classes every year. He told his students to expect to move up next year. Sure enough, every year, almost half of his low-level students moved up, and he never had one come back and tell him she or he couldn't do the work at the higher level. In conclusion, all school professionals, principals, and teachers should develop higher expectations for underachieving students, for these higher expectations may result in higher achievement. Number four. Help students retain information. Some students do poorly in school because they have poor study skills, and this deficit goes unrecognized in the pressure to teach to content standards. Teachers can help students who are deficient in skills like remembering information, organizing information, taking notes, and strategic planning. These struggling students can learn how to turn effort into success by acquiring the tools necessary to get the job done. Two great ways to help students retain information are adding meaning to schoolwork and using the class period in the most effective way. The teacher can also improve retention by packaging information in an engaging way. Number five, understand students' individual differences. If children come to school motivated and focused, they have a good chance for success. If, however, they come to school with problems, like I did, or if they are socially backward, unmotivated, lacking in confidence, immature, unable to concentrate, or has emotional problems, 
then they could be in trouble. A child can come to school with all kinds of personal baggage, which can inhibit the learning process. And when educators take a one-size-fits-all approach to education, too many children fall through the cracks. If my teachers had paid attention to my academic needs, they might have had more success with me. Improving achievement is the best first step toward altering negative behavior. To be able to improve achievement, a teacher must consider a child's learning style, personality, talents, and cultural background. This is hard, but the skillful teacher personalizes instruction within a group context because teachers should always avoid the drawbacks of the one-size-fits-all approach. All this useful information came from these websites, and I've left these links below this video. If you want YouTube to notify you that I've uploaded a new video in this series, you can subscribe to my channel. And you subscribe to my channel by clicking on my head as soon as it appears on the screen. If you want to watch this entire series from the start, you can do that by clicking on that link as soon as it appears on the screen. I'll be back next week with some more Swedish pronunciation training. Until then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and bye for now.